I know you did that. <laughs> That's the easiest 10% you can get. Yes. Okay, good, good. And I see this class also comes with a project. It does, it does, because we want to be supervisors. And so we need a little bit of practice to ensure that we're conveying um, the right message and we're training properly. And so the project is just to assist us, you know, give us a little bit of practice um, to see somebody else's point of view and see if they're receptive to your learning mm -hmm. and or to your teaching. And if they're not receptive, what you do and how you would handle it. Okay. So it's nothing to fail, right? It's I, just for practice and to, to make you comfortable. Okay. My question with this is I noticed the project is worth 10%. Yes. That's the part that's the one that's due February 9th, right? No, that's due towards the end. Let me just look at the agenda. Yeah, because I see in something here what's it a project. Um, the projects and presentations those are, and then I see key ingredients of mentoring relationships so I try to put them where they need to be on my calendar okay so <laughs> let's look at wait, my system is a little jumpy tonight let me just check my plug sometimes my plug gives me an issue I'm all plugged in okay should be okay now I checked all the connections um I'm pulling up the agenda I thought I had it open. Let me just look. Okay, so if we look at the agenda, um, mm -hmm. on February 9th, it says the speech. Oh, so, the agenda. Sorry? The agenda? Yeah, it says agenda spring 21, and it just gives you the name of the class. My name is Bullard, the date, the expectation, the course description, Okay, okay. If you look all the work all the way to the last page, it says working agenda. So it okay. gives you all the dates. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the speech on February 9th is what is due. And if you look um at the top of the men mentoring, mm. it says commencement speech where you write a 300 to 500 word essay discussing what is required to become a future leader and answering one of the questions below. So that's right. That's what's due on the night. That's the 10%? No, no, that's not it. Okay. The uh, mentoring that's due on the 30th of March is the 10%. So uh, we'll, we'll discuss. I understand. Yeah, we'll discuss all of that tonight. So it'll be clear and everybody will, you know, okay, we'll discuss if anything is not clear. Okay, now I understand now. Right. Yeah, so you got to, towards the end of the class, so by the end of the class, you would have learned enough, um, you know, gotten enough information, enough knowledge to carry out the project. Um, trust me, it's not, it's not difficult. Again, it's just, if you are going to move on to the next level as supervisor, we want to ensure that you carry some key attributes with you, the right attitude, um, the right tone, and correct information to pass on the, the persons that you are going to supervise. Okay. Okay. Yes, so all of this, all of this is just to help. It's not difficult. It's very achievable. So okay. no worries. Okay. Okay. I was able to print it out. So I have a hard copy of it now.
Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you. Could you hear me the entire time? Because I was just talking for about 10, 10 minutes. No? No. Oh, ma'am. Oh. Ma Sorry. Okay. I think my screen would have been muted. Okay. So I'll start all of that over again. So um, my name is Miss Bullard. I've been with the Institute for the past seven years. Um, I teach supervisory skills, customer service and marketing, um, international compliance and any money laundering, as well as intro and intermediate to compliance. Um, I've worked with Royal Bank for the majority of my career, uh, 16 plus years. Um, I've always worked, I started off in the retail section and I went all the way up to trust. Um, I've been in the offshore um, departments for the last 10 years as the manager of business support and operations. Um, I've also been um, a compliance officer in my latest uh, position. And so my background is primarily operations, compliance and audit. Um, I supervised, I was the manager of business support as well as the two tell a supervisor. So I've had a lot of supervisory positions um, and, and a lot of institutions don't realize that it's completely different from managing people versus not managing um, persons. So I have a vast amount of knowledge um, in regards to financial, the financial services sector. However, um, like I said previously, and I don't know if everybody would have gotten this, but I, every semester, you know, I meet new people who have added value, who I'm able to network with and who has given me valuable feedback and who helped me to, you know, add more value to the course. And so this course is discussion based. And what the expectation is, is that you read the book. And as I said previously, the book is a very good book. Um, it has lots of detail, it's relevant. Um, you can apply it in your everyday um, jobs and even in, in your life. Um, so I, you know, encourage you to take some time to read the book. Um, what happens is, you know, you, I sent out an agenda with dates and many persons, you know, the week is, is so difficult and a lot of things happen and people don't get the opportunity to read the book. And so when I come on, I talk a lot and I talk a lot. Sometimes you just have to say, Ms. Bullet, too much information, stop right there. But and I'm happy with that and I'm happy, I welcome feedback. But if you don't read the book, it will be difficult for you to keep up in the class. And if we look at the agenda, we'll see that um, classes from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, we normally have a 30 minute break um, since we have gotten online. And even when we're in class, persons prefer for the 30 minute break to be towards the end. And so at 8.30, we normally end. So can we have a general consensus? Does everybody want to end at 30 or would they like their 30 minute break halfway through? What, what would work for you? 830 is fine for me. 830? Anybody objecting no. to 830? No? Okay. So sometimes we will also have class work. And so normally the lecture goes on at eight o'clock and then at eight o'clock we do our class work and then we end at 830. So it just depends on how um, the class goes and what works best. Um, like I said, uh, we have an 85% passing rate. Um, I expect everybody to fully complete this um, course. Um, it's very achievable. Um, persons learn a lot. Um, they're very receptive to what is taught and we network and we work together to ensure that everybody is successful at the end. The passing rate is 65%. Um, but of course, you know, we have a lot of scholars in the class who, you know, some persons get up to you know, full marks, 95, 96%. So most persons aim for A. Um, any questions about the agenda, the class times, any any issue? Did we see the midterm date and the final exam date? Any conflicts there for anybody? Response, response, I need a response. No, oh, so far, it's okay, I mean. Okay, so normally institutions offer a study day or two, and so that's the purpose of the agenda, so that you would know that my midterm is on February 12th, so let me go into my office, 
and find out if they do offer study days one, one or two days and let me schedule now my day off for my midterm. Again, for the final exam, if they offer two days per course, they normally give you one day for the midterm, one day for the final exam. So now is the time to um, request those days if they are offered and, um, you know, because all classes are normally starting this week. So before, you know, all the days are booked up and most persons will have a midterm around February. So get in early if your office offers those dates. And if you feel, uh, you know, you need extra time, um, if they don't offer study days, some persons also go and request a vacation day. So you can go to the course and you can see if you are catching on from the quizzes, from the homework, um, all of that will let you know if you need to then apply for those dates, okay? But otherwise, um, for the quizzes, it, you know, everybody normally we get through the quiz and we are able to discuss it and, and find out where we need more help or more information and we go from there, okay? Okay, so on the agenda, my email address is there. It's a 14th week session um, every Tuesday February 23rd to April 13th, you can see the course description and you can go through that and read um, the participation in the class activities. If you have any questions, just let me know. The grading criteria is the same as if you've taken any other class too with BIFs. It's the same grading scale as per BIFs policies. Um, the class material, just this book is required and I would have sent, you know, any other attachment in the introduction and if there needs to be any more attachments, I'll send those out. Um, the grading distribution, 60% um, for the final exam. In term quizzes in the midterm is 20%. The project is 10%. If you do not complete the project, you get an incomplete and you cannot pass the class. And then attendance, homework, and participation. So normally some persons um, feel that once you know, they've gone through the lecture, they wanna take notes and they miss bits and pieces, so they listen to the recording. However, if you want the 10% for um, participation, you cannot miss more than three classes, okay? So Miguel normally takes the agenda at the end of the class to make sure that anybody, you know, who everybody who's supposed to be here is here. If you come late, that's fine. Um, if you have to leave early, that's fine, but just let us know to ensure that you're on the, um, the schedule for that you attended the class. So at the end of the course, you can get your full points. Along with, um, you know, this grading, I also offer an additional 5% bonus. So for the persons who have previously had me in customer service, um, you know, they would find that it's beneficial. Um, that 5%, you can get that by attending Toastmasters, Rotary, or Kawanas and coming back to the um, class and discussing, you know, the experience, and then you can get a 5% bonus point. And that bonus has helped a lot of persons. For the scholars, it's the difference between an A and a B. For the persons who are just, um, you know, needed that extra 5%, persons would have gotten 60, and that extra five would have brought them to the 65. And so most persons find it beneficial. And then if, you know, you don't have time and you don't want to network, then it's not for you, then it's fine. You just stick with the regular grading system that's already in place. Okay, a any questions about the agenda? I have a question about the project, what's done. Um, the 10 points, would you have one, one to 10? Do we have to answer all of those or we're just picking? Okay, um, so let's, 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 what does it say at the top? Let's have a read of what it says at the top. Um, it says projects and presentations. Mm -hmm. And it's saying the commencement speech. I guess that'll be the title and then and of the date that it's due. It says 300 to 5 to 500 words discussing what is required. Why to become a future a future leader? Oh, now it says to answer. Yeah, okay, it says good. to answer 
one of those questions. Okay, excellent, Roseanne, excellent. So just one of those questions. And in fact, it doesn't even have mm -hmm. to be one of those questions. One of those, those questions are just there to give you ideas. So hopefully once we would have read this okay. speech, we come up with our own questions, okay? Okay. And, and I'll just document that. Okay, excellent, very good. A any other questions? Are we all clear about the Not agenda? At the moment. No? Okay, do we know how, Kendrick, you wanna tell us how we can get that 5%? Uh, I have basically had two questions. So these are just a sample questions if you want to use these. But the essay, itself, the essay itself should be on the require the requirements basically becoming a future leader. What are the requirements? Okay, right. so that's right. clear. But we're going to have a discussion and then we're going to come up with our own questions as well that you could perhaps add to that. Okay, so okay. you're going to talk about the requirements and then from the parts of the speech that you that you choose and you give comments on, then um, we'll see what other questions we come up with. So it's very flexible, but that was just to give you an idea. The Toastmasters or Rotary, you said that you have the capabilities of making up the next 5%. Is that going to visit a meeting or becoming a part of those prospective groups? Just, just a visit. And if you decide to join after, that's excellent. But just visiting, and most of them are online now and from my other classes, because I offer this in all classes, so it's the ability to network. And so um, if you are not familiar with any of those groups and you need an invite, I will introduce you to one of the students in the other groups who have already attended and they, they will send you an invite if you need okay. some help. Otherwise you can, you know, just go out on your own and, and attend a meeting and share it with the class. Actually, you can do that. You can just go out on your own and just just visit one of the meetings. Yeah, I, thought, yeah. I thought you had to be invited to actually one of the meetings by someone. No, no, not necessarily. You can just, if you see, they normally have a web page. If you pull up Rotary or Kiwanis, or what have you, they have a web page or a Facebook page and you click on it and it tells you um, when the date is and then it's invited. Um, um, they give you the, all is invited, I'm sorry. They give you the dates and the time and where it'll be. Um, there is, however, one or two Toastmasters groups that is all men, you know, no women allowed. And they normally have one session per year where they um, invite, all women and um, that's at Valentine's. So most persons who have never been before, they take advantage of that session. Now, last year, it was a bit raunchy and I was sorry that I invited the persons because it, it, it was a little bit raunchy. It's normally very good. You meet a lot of people, it's a good way to network. But last year, it was a little raunchy. So I was sorry that I suggested it, but hopefully this year, you know, they get back in line. But it's totally up to you. If you need an invite, just let me know. We'll do, ma'am. We'll oh, okay, great. Great. Okay, so everybody online, everybody who just joined, Margaret, are you good with the information so far? Yes, ma'am. I just write none. Oh. Um, okay, so good. Send me an invite to the, to the meeting. Okay, great. Okay, so we want to continue to look at... Um, that same handout about mentoring. So now we'll go into talking about the project. And so the project, um, because we're gonna become supervisors, and again, like I said, we want to ensure that we have the correct training, um, we give out good information, um, we give persons, you know, um, you know, we hand over the baton and they, you know, we have a good succession plan. What we want to do is we want to find somebody um, from church, from work, um, not at home. We don't want you to do a family member unless it's a family member that needs assistance. Um, in the past, we have had persons, you know, um, who did volunteer work. And so one lady was already um, at the Ramfley home. So she picked up um, a child who was interested in financial services. And so that was the um, person that she worked with um, 
for six weeks and she mentored the person. And basically she just told them the different avenues to get into the financial services sector. And she, um, she went um, to for the person's to Biff, showed them the school, introduced them to various lecturers and said, these are the courses and this is what you would need to take. And then um, the person was still in high school and was about to take the GCSE. So she offered to study with her one day with the BGCSEs and um, help her go through the work to ensure that she understood. Um, then she told her, this is what you would need to do to enroll. Um, she even went as far as to ask her employer if she could bring her to work one day for on the job training and that worked out. Um, so persons have found it very beneficial. Um, one person came in and said that, you know, at a certain point um, when women have teenage daughters, um, they seem to always be at war and right at that particular time, she was at war with her teenage daughter. And so she decided to um, ask her daughter if she would participate in um, this session. And she, they also found it to be beneficial. And she said, um, through research, they found that a lot of women had this issue. And so they worked on it together and they were able to mend their relationship. And she was able to see things from her daughter's first, um, point of view. And her daughter understood her more clearly. And so it helped them um, to have a better relationship. So, you know, she even encouraged her daughter to go to college and go on to the next step. So um, that was a very um, good um, experience. Then I had a gentleman who said that, you know, he still lived in the area that he grew up in. And um, he had dropped out of school when he was a teenager and was on the blocks and, you know, hanging out with the wrong company and doing the wrong things. And he said um, that an uncle had pulled him aside and said, listen, I can help you to get clean up. I can help you to go back to school. I can help you to get your GED and what have you. And so he decided that now he was like in his mid forties and he was on the right track and he had went back to school, gotten his high school diploma, gotten his um, bachelor's degree. And so he actually went on the blocks and he told one of the young guys aside, said, listen, there's a better way out and um, I am going to help you. And so a lot of persons have, um, you know, done a lot of positive things, um, you know, with this mentoring um, project. And so it's really, really up to you um, what you want to do, um, how you want to go about it, and who you choose, okay? And so what we're going to do is, I'm going to put it up on the screen. Let me try and share my screen. And then so we won't hear Ms. Bullitt's voice the entire night. Remember now, this is discussion-based. It's by participation. You have to read, and then you come and ask questions, and we go from there. So I think Kendrick, spoke, you know, stood out to me right away. And he seems to be the only male in this class at the moment. So I'm getting used to, to it. Class, we I'm wanna, getting used to and it. that's excellent, by the way. Keep it up. Don't be discouraged. The ladies will take care of you. Um, do you want to start off a meeting for us? Um, what, what we have to do for our mentoring project? And then we'll go from there. Yeah, because I was I was going to have I was having some questions. Um, the program itself, at the end of it, what is expected? A presentation or something written? Right. And so what, what you will do is you will present to us. Um, you don't have to call any names, but you will tell us who you mentored, why you chose that person, and uh, what the experience was, and if they found it beneficial, and if you found it beneficial. Yeah, I, I'm looking at it, and I'm... I'm trying to think on it right now, whether I could do it with somebody from church, but I know with the struggles with and the challenges with COVID and the restrictions of social distancing and those challenges. Thank you. Okay. So perhaps yeah. work, work, persons find it easier to just find somebody at work and say in one of their pairs to say, you know, I'm vying for the next supervisory position 
do you mind if I practice with you and can you give me honest feedback? <laughs> Sorry, uh, at work. Okay, uh, that may not work for me, but I would I would try another avenue, but the work aspect, I don't think it's gonna be it's, it's not gonna be conducive. Okay, whatever works best for you. So you all don't have these little clicks and and, and these uh, work husbands and work wives. You all don't have those in your institutions. Uh, I no. work alone. <laughs> you work alone. Okay. It's only work... one person on myself. Oh, okay. For sure. I have a bunch of females that I work with. So. And so none of them would assist you with this. I am practically the junior person in my office. Okay, so there's nothing. Sometimes you got to manage up. Supervision does not only come from the top down, you know, it, it, sometimes you have to manage up. Because in the Bahamas for many years, um, persons have, you know, they hate going to work. Um, they, some people have committed suicide from the way that they are treated at work. From, they hate their supervisors. Um, we spend eight hours at work, eight hours at home, eight hours at rest, and eight for eight hours a day, we are on pins and needles. Um, we hate the environment we are in, but when we get off, we go home and we take that same toxic environment to our houses, and we talk about the people who work all night long, correct? Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> this class will help us to stop all of that, okay? And to ensure that when we go home, we go home to paradise, and that... Mm -hmm. um, we leave whatever problems and issues that we have in the workplace at work and we ensure that we do not show up anywhere for eight hours that we absolutely hate and, and you know, it's only about the money, okay? okay. So we want to fix this, what this class is all about. We want to fix um, some of these social ills and uh, another big problem that we have, particularly in the Bahamas, I've been there for 30 years, or so I's the oldest, and so I'm next in line for this position. I am not qualified. I've been to school in the last 10 years. I don't know how to talk to people, but because I've been there the longest, I have to, before they retire me and throw me out the door, they have to let me supervise some people and make their lives hell before they let me go, right? That's, that's what has happened with you all? Oh. No, well, only Miss Bullet. Tell me feedback to me. Come on, give me some feedback. I never been on a job where I had a uh, good relationship with anyone who was a supervisor over me. Really? I mean, okay. you were being cool to some point, but like to say you would be bubbly and joyous and want to come in to work and try to put your best foot your best foot forward no okay so what why have you accepted that all these years why is that because right? really my job is just my job the past the past jobs i've been on was in anything that was that i was wanted to do it was just to say the harbor job so okay. now i'm in so the what avenue you're saying of is... getting into a field that i am interested in and what i yeah. could turn into a career Okay, so what if I tell you, I don't like, I'm not a teacher, you know, I'm, I've i mm -hmm. been in banking for um, more than 20 years. Before I started banking, I was in a completely different field. That mm -hmm. means I shouldn't have been happy in banking for the past 20 years. Not at all. No. Well, I talk. <laughs> And then, really? Life talk? <laughs> no, well, Roseanne, we're here to stop life from being tough. And look at things some differently and we want to train the persons in this class to go in the world and make a difference and if they say each one each one right yes okay. and and we are going to make a difference so mm -hmm. no longer from today on we are not going to show up to work just to get the job done or just because we need this money we are going to show up to work we are going to be at peace and even if we don't love the job and it's not our passion we are going to at least return from work every day happy knowing that we did our best. Okay, we can't save the world, but if some of us, if we change our mindset, you know, the people say, be the change that you want to see, mm -hmm. it really comes from within. So if we're going to, after we get some of this knowledge, we're going to look at things differently and that will help us 
you know, cope as we go and go to war each day. Because right now we're going to war each day. Okay, by the end of this class, hopefully we'll fix that. Okay? Okay. Okay, great. Just trust me, believe in me, we can do it. We can do it. Hello? <laughs> go ahead. No, but you were saying something? No, if at the end of this class, you can make that change. It, it, it should be required that everybody, when joining the workforce, take this class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll be bubbly and drumming them as all spawns. Agreed. 100%. <laughs> I agree with you all 100%. But is. I feel that we have taken it for too long. And now we have to do something about it. It's now time to take action. And we have to be the difference that we want to see. And one day, we are the future leaders. And so I hope that today you are in this class because you hope one day, or you know one day, that you will be the CEO, that you will be in charge, and you will set the culture, you will set the attitude, you will set the training. Um, you know, like you said, everybody must take this class. You will be the person who's going to make it mandatory that everybody take this class because you will see the benefits of it. Okay, so we can get there. Margaret, you wanted to say something? No, I said that just happens because a lot of persons, um, they bring their personal issues on the job. They don't know how to um, separate the two. That's Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah. And so what we do each day is I work for the Royal Bank of Canada, but I show up every day with my own agenda. And each, and we're going to get to the book where we find that each com company has a mission statement a vision statement and a set of values or goals. Margaret, tell me the vision of your company or your mission statement. Charles, that's a good question. You don't know, right? <laughs> and guess what? I can tell you, let me tell you how many questions we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. None of us know. None of us know. And you know why? Because we show up each day with our own agenda. We show up as if it's Bullet & Co, not Royal Bank & Co, right? <laughs> and so if you don't know the value, the mission statement or the vision of your, your company, then you're doing your own thing. You are not working every day to achieve their goals. And it's so cooler. when we have 30 of us doing our own thing, that's what happens. Go ahead, Kendra. Uh, we're not too big to be cancer for small. That's one of our models at uh, TSWCCUL. Okay. And in the department that I'm in, I'm in the collections department, I'm a collections officer. That is one of the uh, premise that our department works with individuals who are now in default, whose loans are now no longer performing. That's something that we drive home, that respect is demanded that when an officer deals with a member, that that person feels comfortable enough that they're not threatened or feel hostility. Okay, excellent, Kendrick. So again, Kendrick at the head of the class. So Kendrick, you are saying every day when you show up to your job, you ensure that you carry out their vision because you, you actually know it, but oh, is that the mission statement? It's more or less the mission statement. And, okay. and knowing if we look at the current status right now of our economy and seeing everything that is transpiring because of COVID-19, it's almost like you have to have a heart okay. because to understand exactly where people are at. And it's something in, in my department. See, I could speak for my manager. We got a great relationship and our department basically works hand in glove. Probably got one finger that won't do what it won't do, but the other four fingers are working pretty much <laughs> well, to, well okay. together. Okay, so Kendrick, you're saying this a woman thing then? You don't have these issues that we have? I think every every institution has its challenges because okay. you're dealing with ex exactly what it says. Organization is a group of people with different concepts, different thinking, different backgrounds coming together in one melting pot. You can have some combustible moments from time to time because you're dealing with different personalities. Okay, but overall, you have good culture, um, and a good ambience. You don't hate your job and you don't hate going to work every day. Uh, I don't hate going to work because I know in the field that I'm in, it's basically to help individuals. From time to time, you do have to take off the gloves. 
that, but that's to be expected as a collector. Uh, but we come in with a mindset of assessing and then going from that particular point as to the questions as to what, the why, and the how. How did you get to this position? What can we do to alter it? And how we could change the dynamics of what you're currently experiencing for the betterment of the institution as well as the member. Okay, but the culture, the culture, I understand how you deal with the customers, but in terms of your the staff, the people that you work with, is there a good culture? Is there a teamwork? Is there a good ambience when you go to work? Yes, ma'am, there is. Okay. I would say if it was a scale of one to 10, I would say that up to the department that I made it says seven. Okay, that's excellent. So good, good that we have at least one example to prove that what I'm saying is actually achievable. Because Rosanna said, where I work, I've always had an issue with a supervisor. Lovell said, you know, they come with like their own agenda. And so we're going to help each other. So I'm very, very happy that at least we have one positive experience. And, and where you know, seven is good. This normally, I expect you to make me happy, but seven is good. Okay, so I'm glad that we have um, some examples. Okay, very good. So see, Roseanne, it is it is achievable. Okay, and it just okay. is that everybody has to do their part. Okay, but we're gonna get to that. And like I said, by the end of this um, class, every job that we show up on, we are going to be happy. We're gonna have good ambience. We're gonna have good culture because we are going to change the way we look at things, okay? And so uh, just to jot down and ensure that everybody knows um, the values of the institution, um, please um, go out and find, you know, between by the next class and come back to the class and you'll start next class by you telling us what the vision and mission statement of your company is and to ensure that you fall in line, um, you know, what their goals are and what they are trying to achieve. Because suppose they say, we, we you know, we want to support Bin Laden or Al-Qaeda or something like that. You never, if you work in the Middle East, you would really have to check um, on to see what type of institution you work for. But luckily for us, we're in the Bahamas, so we don't have to worry about that. But just, just find out because you want to know what you're showing up to work for and what you're committing to, okay? Okay. Okay, okay good. So we are gonna pull up the mentoring and, and um, Kendrick is gonna read for us exactly what we need to have to do. And then um, we, we're gonna go from there. So we know that in um, at the end, in the six weeks so on March the 30th, we're going to um, do a presentation after we would have selected a person that we want to mentor. Okay, so go ahead, um, Kendrick, and read for us. Uh, one, purpose. Mm -hmm. This relationship is a high priority for both of you. You consider being a mentor as one of the main purposes of your life. You and your mentee are clear on why you're together and the reason you're meeting. You've discussed and agreed upon what you work on and you recognize, sorry, you'll recognize when you've completed your purpose. You feel good about the focus of your relationship and what you're doing in it. From time to time to check, you check in to see if you should change that purpose or focus in some way. When you've accomplished the purpose of your relationship, you're willing to see the relationship shift focus or perhaps end for the time being. Continue? Yes, please. Two, communication. You thank you. You communicate in the way in the ways, bracket, in person, phone, email, or mail. You both prefer. You get back to your mentee in the time frame you've agreed upon. Your mentee doesn't does the same. The communication between you adds up to at least one or two hours a month and is frequently enough for both of you. You're an effective listener and you remember what your mentee, your mentee tells you. You're asked 
appropriate questions and your mentee responds. You share information about yourself. You mentor, you monitor, mm -hmm. excuse me, you mm -hmm. monitor your nonverbal language to be sure it's conveying what you want it to. You help your mentee recognize how he or she, okay, how Sorry. he or she is communicating and where appropriate. You make suggestions for improvement. Trust, the trust between you, tr the trust between you is growing. You welcome and keep in confidence the information your mentee shares with you. Yeah, I know that's for that. Your mentee knows he or she can count on you to be honest yet safe and to follow through on your promises. You avoid any trust breaking behavior such as canceling appointments without compelling reason, reasons, talking negatively about others or unfairly criticizing your mentee. You're increasingly, you're increasingly sharing more of yourself and are becoming less guarded than when you first than when you first got together. Okay, let's talk about your little comment. What, why are you saying I don't know about that? What that mean, Kendra? Come on, speak to me. What that mean? How are we building trust? I believe that one of the biggest issues that we find in our country is just that. When we look at family members, there's hesitation in regards to trust. When we look at the church in certain aspects, there is a lack of trust. When we look at our political structure, there's a lack of trust. I mean, we could have all the, it's a matter of trust. That was a political slogan a few years back. But I think that this particular one right here is where we find most millennials and most teenagers have the greatest issue in trusting adults because they feel as if you're not real, you're not genuine, and you're not authentic. That's why I said what I said. Because okay. this right here, that this is this is the uh, straw that's breaking our back right now as a nation. Trust. Okay. And so do we accept that or what what is the solution? The solution is is like if you're going to do a mentee program. One thing I would say, because um, I was just involved at one point involving youth ministry, is that trust is not built in one month, two months, three months. It's built over a period of time. I often tell people, young people, they forget 80% of the things that you say. But okay. they remember what you did more than what you said. And what I find is that people do a lot of talking, but there's no action behind it to reinforce a relationship. I agree 100% with you, Kendra, 100%. We talk, I could talk for three hours. You could ask some of the people who are in the other class. You have to get it done. Once you would have spoken, we have to put some spy on the words we said out there. And I do agree with you, what you said about um, the millennials. So for the purpose of this, I, I know you can't build trust, but again, there has to be some trust established within the relationship. So perhaps you can choose somebody who you have a relationship with already, or somebody your age. It doesn't have to be a millennial. It can be somebody your age or even somebody older, okay? Because persons have selected, you know, somebody has selected like an elderly aunt who, who, who needed help, right? So just for the purpose of, you know, because we don't want anything to hinder you when, you know, trying to complete your project. So, you know, if you could find somebody, perhaps your age or somebody who you are familiar with already, who will, you know, it wouldn't take so long to trust with what you are doing in, in the moment. Is that okay? That's that's fine. I'm I'm gonna work. I'm gonna see what I could. Uh, I, yeah, what you can do. What I can do. Okay, great, great. Okay, continue. Where did I leave off? Progress. You trust so you're on number four with the process. Process. Your meetings and other interactions are moving along at the right pace. You must often enough. You must meet often enough to suit you. You both. And those sessions are usually the right length. You both like where you're meeting. 
you're aware of all four stages of formal mentoring, planning, building, building relationship, negotiating agreements, developing the mentee, maintaining momentum, and ending the formal mentor mentoring part of the relationship and are helping and are helping guide your mentee through them. You like, you like how you operate as a mentoring pair and check in with each other to see if you're both satisfied. Progress. You're helping your mentee identify appropriate life goals and build competencies to reach those goals. You help him or her identify interesting learning experiences and process the results of these together. Your mentee has made significant progress towards the goals since starting to meet with you. You're making significant progress in your ability to mentor. Feedback. You ask your mentee how he or she wanted positive and corrective feedback from you. You're doing your best to give this feedback in an honest and tactful manner and as frequently as agreed upon. You give your mentee much more positive reinforcement than you give correction. When you give your mentee feedback, you observe how he or she applies it and, if necessary, mention points again. You invite him or her to give you positive and corrective feedback on how, you, how you're doing as a mentor. When you receive feedback, you're, you're non-defensive and you're non-defensive and take up immediate and take immediate steps to apply it. Okay. And again, the below is just again some example questions. If you use, if you select somebody who you work with, where you know you can answer in your in your presentation, who is the knowledge source in your um, company? You and your mentee can agree on who needs the knowledge. Um, what are the most common um, competencies that people want to improve on? Um, are there trends or commonalities among the people who need the knowledge, such as age, location, seniority, or tenure? Where are the biggest gaps of knowledge in your company? What are the roadblocks to sharing? So again, all of this is just an example of what you do, how you do it, and how you what you can do to present it. So in your presentation, once you, you know, not calling a name, but you can say, I chose somebody at work. Um, the purpose, I chose this person because um, we were working on a project together and the person may have made some mistakes and I felt that I could add some value. Um, you would say how often you all um, communicated and by which channel, um, how you develop trust, um, what process you, you took and um, what did you share or what did you plan or what did you train them on your progress and then provide some feedback. Okay, so again, it's just a guideline as to what is required for the project and some ideas to for how you can lay it out. But it's completely up to you um, over the next six months to find the person, um, and you mentor them and, and then hopefully they will find it, you know, they'll be receptive to what you're doing and they will provide feedback. So a lot of persons um, after they presented, um, some persons um, recorded them on WhatsApp and created a voice note, you know, people got very creative with it. In terms of feedback, one person selected um, a colleague who was away in college in China and you know that person sent a, a voice note so um, you know it's, you can be creative with it um, and you can add or take away um, you know whatever you would like from the guideline. Question Ms. Bullard. Mm -hmm, go ahead. Um, so this is just to be verbally presented or is it to be something drawn up to hand in? No, what we do normally with all projects is the week, so it's done, let me just look at the calendar on March 30th, and we want to ensure that, 
You know, a lot of times, unfortunately, some people just stand up there and wing it. Some people change what they say based on what other persons have said, and then some persons just did not do it at all. And so while the presentation is done um, due on the 30th, I normally ask for you to send it in. You can write it in um, like I guess essay form and send it in on that Sunday afternoon, the 28th. So you will okay. present on the 30th, but it should be sent to my email by March 28th. Fine too, okay. 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 Y'all sound so excited. All right, can't wait. <laughs> Okay, any questions? Are, are we clear on what needs to be done? I'm, I'm basically guessing is that you're working with a particular individual to assist them in areas where they may find or have challenges. Correct. Thank you. Okay. So another question, um, and I'm thinking about myself when I ask this question. Um, like I said, I'm practically the junior person in my office. So working in terms of mentoring somebody else, um, never really had the opportunity to. Um, I have had a summer student that came in maybe three, four years ago. And I had to show the ropes and make sure they were doing what was required or whatever. But other than that, I can say the only person that I probably really mentor is my child, my daughter. So I guess what I'm asking is um, somebody like me don't really have um, a lot of mentoring experience or um, I'm just trying to figure out how do I tackle this? Okay, so let's let's introduce ourselves and, and find out why we took this class then. Because we are, this class is supervisory skills and we are in this class with hopes to become future leaders and we hope to be supervisors one day. Is, is that why most of us are here? Lovell, yeah. or is that why you're here? Yes, definitely. Okay, and so therefore, Sometimes, um, like I worked in the operations department and I didn't, you know, I did operations for the credit department. I didn't know anything about credit. And sometimes the supervisor from credit had to take me under her wing and say, let me show you how to do this or this is what we do. And so is there like another department? It doesn't, you don't have to, um, you know, be the supervisor, but could you ask somebody at work who will, you know, be receptive. Is there, is there anything that you know that they don't know that you can share with them or you can teach them? That probably is. I'm, I'm sure there is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there is. If, if, even if you file in, because, you know, I managed the filing room for a very long time and people look down at filing as the oldest and lowest level in the bank, but that was, they found that it was one of the most important um, areas in the bank of those files were not filed properly when they got audits um, when customers oh, nice. requested, right? And so we had to actually go on a training program with high level executive managers to say, this is how the files have to be kept. If when the auditors come in, you don't want to get an audit note because this is missing and that is missing and or this is incomplete. So it was very extensive training that we went to. So even if you just file in, Perhaps you could take out a file and say, you know, if we keep it in this order, if, you know, only certain persons have access, if the document is complete, dated, you know, stuff like that. I think, I think I was looking at it wrong. Yeah, so okay. it, it, it's about teaching. Everybody has a talent and everybody does something different. And, you know, it could be like cross training. It, it doesn't have to be that it's, somebody above you you, you know, know i was go ahead sorry sorry no, the way i was looking at this project was that you are to assist somebody to try and get them when i uh basically to the next level when i say to the next level I, um basically 
to try and help them as best as possible to goal in life or something like yeah, that. So yeah. when no, I said I was it, looking at it wrong. Okay. I, I realize what you're saying now is okay, yeah. I get it. I, yeah, so it could be cross training as well. It don't have to be somebody below, you know, or what okay. have you or a different level or what have you. Okay. Because we could learn at all levels. Gotcha. And I'm sure there's some things that like the executive team um did not know because um, and this is going to sound very bad. Um, I was um, in compliance and the document control department, the bank was closing down and the whole document control department had left and they automatically put the document control department under compliance, right? And so nobody in compliance knew how to scan. And I actually used to supervise the scanners. <laughs> Huh? The supervisor scanners, and they, so they said, "Oh, Miss Bullard, um, the whole document control department there, and the bank isn't going to close for six months, and so you have to scan, or one of your staff have to scan." I said, "Well, I only have two staff left, and they they have about thirty days left. They're not going to learn how to scan, and so um, I had to learn how to scan. This like, how did you manage the scanners if you didn't know how to scan? You know, and I even saw them type little secret emails." She said she used to be the manager of the scanners and she don't even know how to scan. So, you know, they was talking about me even, but that's that's okay. But I learned how to scan and I, I feel in the last six months, I became very good at it. So I was proud of myself. But anyway, that was just a little story. Okay. Okay, good. A any more questions? Blakely, you you good? Were you um, caught up with us? Right. Um, I know I was a little late, but I have a question. Mm -hmm. The person that I am mentoring, I let them know that they're part of, I guess, this this project for my class? Yeah. Or yeah. Just do it. Oh, okay. No, yeah, yeah, you can. No secrets. I mean, um, you wanna you don't want to intrude on anybody. So just ask them. You don't have to call their name. But you mm -hmm. can just say, I selected this female because of A, B, or C. But we don't need any names. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay good. Um, are you clear on everything else? Yes, I am. Okay, good, good. Okay, so Blakely, good. So Blakely um, was previously in a class with me, and I think I would have shared the speech with you, Blakely. Do, did I share it with you or no? Speech was that? The speech that's attached in your welcome email. Oh, I didn't see it, sorry. Okay, good. But so if I, hopefully, if I would have um, shared it with you before, then um, just for customer service, I don't think we went in, in depth. In this class, we are going to go in depth um, and answer some questions. We're gonna make up some questions and then we're gonna try to answer them. So that will be the first part of this, um, what's gonna be due on February 9th. So we're clear on the agenda, we're clear on what's required for the mentoring project. And so now we're going to read the speech. And so then we will know um, what is required of the speech. Um, everybody on track? Claire has mud so far, Margaret? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Noel, you good? Yes, ma'am, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, good. You all got to talk back to me. <laughs> um, Fabian and Dania, I haven't heard from you all. Are you all be good? Any questions? Questions. Good. Okay, so make sure you all get your 10%. You all got to talk back to me to get your 10%. Okay. Okay, good. Good. Okay, so let's pull up the speech. And again, um, some persons want to get their 10% in the first class. Kendrick is halfway there. Oh, wow. So um, we want to, you know, Kendrick already taking over the whole class because uh, he's the only male. So we want to ensure that we keep up with Kendrick. OK, I can go with zero to 30. You can. I, I didn't hear you. No, I said I'll go zero to 30. I'll be quiet for the rest of the class. <laughs> No, Kendrick, this is this an eight-page speech. Everybody got a chance. Every, everybody got a chance. And that, that means, that just means that um, you would have your 10% right up front. And for the rest of the class, you could just chill out. Doesn't that sound good? This next one is the speech. Long like yeah. that. Yeah, this is the speech. Just the one that's due for every night. Yeah, this is what's due for every night. All okay. Right. And so 
Again, um, we're going to talk about leadership in our um, next class. We're going to start off with chapter one today, and then we're going to go on to um, chapter nine. It talks about leadership. And so this um, speech is re very relevant. And after we read it, you will see, you know, we're going to discuss it, and then you will see how to um, complete the essay that is due on February 9th. Okay, so we have any volunteers up front? Anybody who wants to get half of their 10% tonight? Let me get half my left. Okay, who, let me see. I was I was sharing my screen. Y'all can see my screen? No. No, okay. Okay, so who, who that is? Who's starting? Because I couldn't see. Who was that? That was Margaret. Okay, Margaret is going to start. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, go, go ahead. So yeah, you can start with the remarks so we can see exactly where this came from okay. and, and why we chose it. Remarks to the class of 20, 2013 at the 39th commencement ceremony at the College of the Bahamas, Tuesday, June 4, 2013 at 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. respectively. Venue, Bahamas Faith Ministries International, Carmichael Road. Participants, the, the faculties of social and educational studies and pure and allied science, sciences will attend the 10 a.m. ceremony and the faculties of Bahama of Business, La, um, Liberal and Fine Arts and Institute of Culinary and Hospitality Management will attend the 4 p.m. ceremony. The theme is embracing education, exceeding expectations and executing excellence. The occasion, the award ceremony marks an important milestone in the lives of the graduates. Uh, some of them will enter the world of work for the first time. Others will resume their working lives with expectations of advancement and others will go on to pursue further studies. Um, presenter H. Gregory J. Bethel, president of Fidelity Bank Bahamas Limited. Okay, and so after you would have gone through, um, you know, the various levels of being the supervisor, you become the manager, then you get to the executive board. And when you get to be the CEO and an executive management, then you normally do presentations at colleges, at, at seminars, and, and, and do different various papers to the, the NASA or Guardian or the Tribune or, or what have you. So you make a contribution. So it's, it's just a, a stage that many executives go, go through, OK? So hold on, is this supposed to be like the speech? Yeah, this is a speech. So our speech will have to be something like this, line up, um, with um, outline like this? No. No, okay. No. No. You, you are just giving your comments and you're gonna do some research based on the part of the speech that you select. Oh, right. okay, got you. Okay, page right. two. I address okay. our graduates today as the desperately needed future leaders in the Bahamas. You cannot fail in the new role that awaits you. You cannot run from the responsibility. This is why you are here today. That is why you have invested time and money, made sacrifices, and disciplined yourselves in the pursuit of education at the great institution, the College of the Bahamas. You are the future leaders of the families, businesses, political organizations, government, departments of ministries, sorry, professional firms, the institutions responsible for the education of our nation and the Christian church or other religious organizations of the Bahamas. Your nation needs you to live a life of excellence and significance and to function at the highest level of life leadership. I wish to challenge you, the future leaders of the Bahamas and address two topics which relate to our theme. Why leaders fall? What matters most in our life? One, one, what, what, why leaders fail, for, fail, sorry, and two, what matters most in our, in our first life, that's what I said, what matters most in our first life, okay. Yeah, that's what that says. Yes, correct, mm -hmm. correct, that's what it says. Don't okay, give sorry. comments at the end. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, anyways, okay. I choose to challenge you, I choose to challenge you with regard to these two issues because the families, institutions, and communities of our nation are in Parel, 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 we need you to rescue, sorry, I wear glasses. I don't know where my glasses are tonight. We need you to rescue them. We need you to embrace leadership, embrace being, embrace being persons of positive influence and embrace the task of influencing people to do what they ought to do rather than what they want to do. We will not stop the decline 
and the KNR families, institutions, and communities. And last, we have more leaders who are successful in their personal pursuits and are focused on what matters most rather than the pursuit of popularity, power, possessions, praise, and privilege. Whether you are aware of it or not, you are the leaders of the next generation who must take action to halt, sorry, this, this perilous decline, attack the, de the decay, and do all that is necessary to improve the situation. Please, con please connect the dots. I am compelling you to now focus on leadership and what really matters most in the first life. It is crucial that you avoid deception, distractions, delay, and denial. Continue. Okay. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Why leaders fail our nation. There are seven basic reasons why leaders fail or become ineffective. Failure to be tenuous. That's the word. Tenacious. 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 Of all knowledge. Failure to read and research. Isolation. Lack of, pardon? Sorry. Lack of accountability to trustworthy advisors with character. Failure to develop a team around them and successors to carry on their legacy in the noble and biblical purposes to which they devote their lives. Three, failure to adapt and change as situations become, as situations and people around them change. Four, arrogance and pride, the spirit that makes one overestimate oneself or herself, underestimate the value of others and become insensitive. Um, five, Excesses, popularities, power, possessions, yes. pleasure, praise, and privilege. Six, ignorance. Um, of or, or deviation. Of or, oh, sorry, of or deviation from. Blatant. I, I lost. Okay. Of, of or deviation oh, from and disobedience of the principles, precepts, Precept. and, and commandments in the Holy Spirit scriptures the word of god seven failure to dedicate themselves to what matters most in this in the first life i appeal to you to live a life of significance and, and excellence be a leader who avoids failure this is the noble purpose for embracing education exceeding expectation and executing excellence again i am calling you to live life at the highest level become an effective leader what matters most in the first life Whew. They okay. are five great. Okay. You wanna let's Blake C you wanna take over? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's there. What matters most in the first life? What matters most in the first life? There are five great issues which determine whether or not we will live a life of significance and excellence or waste a life that matters or matters not, a life lived at its highest level, the life of an effective leader. You have to get these five things right or you will have no significant legacy. That is, people who also live a life of significance and excellence because of your influence. Example, involvement and leadership. The five most important issues of life are one, how much money you have, how you get your money, and how you use your money. The sooner you have enough money, the sooner you can retire and do what you really want to do without constraints of a master. I define retirement as a stage in life when you wake up in the morning without the yoke of a master and do what you want to do, when you want to do it, with whom you want to do it, for how long you want to do it, how you want to do it because you have the money to do it. We all should work hard at an occupation so we can get money, save it, and, save it and invest it so we can stop working on someone else's job in someone else's business or organization so we can release all of our potential into the pursuit and endeavor to touch the lives of people our way. Save and invest more and use your time wisely to do the things that will allow you to retire sooner and achieve your other goals sooner, including the more effective use of your knowledge, money, time, and talents. 
natural and supernatural gifts for noble purposes like improving the lives of others as you seek to influence rather than impress. This call for change and a plan, this call for change and a plan, goals, a budget and a financial advisor to help you. Keep, your, keep you accountable and measure your progress network. You must commit time and effort to financial planning. As you set your goals and prepare your monthly budget, consider how you can help others. We live in an era where too many people are self-absorbed, self-centered, and utterly selfish. Don't go there. When you come face to face with your creator, do so having lived a significant life of achievement, success, and contribution to the life of hopeless, to the lives of the hopeless and helpless. Dedicate your time and money to noble pursuits greater than yourself and seek to help others with resources, hope, guidance, influence, and useful information. I also have a word of caution, avoid debt. Debt reduces your options in life. The joy in life and delays your retirement. Avoid death by death. Avoid the debt trap. Never, never borrow money to buy pleasure or possessions which decline in value or pop popularity, seeking to impress others. Borrow only to buy that which will increase in value or increase your cash flow and ability to save and invest. That is debt consolidation. Do not let the good mark do not let the good marketing skills of any company entice you to spend money on that which is neither important nor urgent. Two, how much knowledge you have. The more knowledge you have, the more money you are able to make and keep. The more knowledge you have, the more good decisions you are likely to make. The more knowledge you have, the better the life of people you can the better the quality of people you can attract to you. The more knowledge you have, the greater your influence. The more knowledge you have, the more people you can help and the more opportunities you will have to impact the lives of our community. The more knowledge you have, the better equipped you will be to build the lives of your children, your family, and the other people you lead, influence, or mentor. The more knowledge you have, the better positioned you should be to borrow money for noble purposes. Always be in, in the pursuit of more knowledge. Use your time wisely so you have more time to pursue knowledge from people who have it. Read relevant books read the newspapers, local and international, take a course and attend seminars, spend time with people who know more than you do, watch educational programs on TV rather than junk, understand that men with power in Asia are doing so, understand what men in power in Asia are doing so you can benefit from their endeavors and not be harmed by them. Visit China and India if you can because they will rule the planet in short order. The more knowledge you have, the more money you are able to earn or access. Plato once said, wise men talk because they have something profound to say. Fools because they have to say something. Be sure to apply your knowledge and work, and work harder than everyone else. Work smart too. Use your knowledge of technology to be more efficient rather than attract attention to yourself or for amusement and entertainment. Okay. Three. You want to continue, continue? Blakely? Yeah, you want to, or you want me to get somebody else? Um, I can if you want. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Three, how healthy you are. The healthier you are due to what you eat, how much you exercise, how much you rest, how you use your time and your, sexual, your sexuality choices, the more energy you have, attractive your parents, money you are able to earn, people you are able to attract to you for noble purposes, years you live, the more likely you are to retire and finish strong. High energy, good looking people with good hygiene and a positive attitude make more money. High energy people are more productive, do more good and have more accomplishments. Healthy people avoid burnout, sickness, high medical bills and premature death. They feel better and don't get depressed for long. Invest time in exercise, recreation, and relaxation. Four, 
who you have relationships with. Who you have relationships with will determine, who you have relationships with determine how much money you earn and keep, how soon you can retire, the value and purpose of your life, the level of your knowledge, the level of your happiness and joy, the content of your character, the level of your success, whether or not you advance on your job and if you, if and when you have children and the quality of their lives and their future. Whether or not you are distracted or deceived and therefore the achievement of your goals is delayed or derailed. When you die, where you go in the afterlife. It is important to allocate time to build your, build your important relationships. If and when you have children, remember that rules without relationships lead to rebellion. If a, if and when you have children, remember that relationships formed for the creation, development, and nurturing of children are the most sacred and most challenging in terms of leadership. Get it right for the sake of our nation. Five, wisdom and good judgment. Wisdom comes from God. It's the ability to acquire knowledge and use your knowledge to make good and beneficial decisions to benefit others. You can ask God for wisdom if you have a relationship for, with him. The level of your wisdom determines the quality of your relationships, the amount of money you earn and keep, how well you use your time, and if you finish strong and live a life of excellence and, and significance as an effective leader. Conclusion, you can have a great life, make more money, pursue noble purposes, retire sooner and live a life of excellence and, and significance as you achieve the highest level of life, leadership, if you choose to. None of us are perfect. We all have weaknesses. We all have a lot of work to do to improve our lives. But despite our weaknesses, flaws and sin, we can resolve today to begin to change and seek the more excellent way. So I challenge and urge you to embrace education and the pursuit of knowledge. Exceed expectations and execute your work and endeavors with excellence and as an, as an outstanding leader in the institutions of our nation, especially our families. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for that, Leslie. Okay, any, any comments? <sighs> Who, 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 written out already? Who, 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 me. who already overwhelmed by all of this? That's me. I, I, in my mind, I'm like, if it's, if, if it's only that easy. Well, it's a start. You have to get on the right yeah. track. I, I mean, know if, it is. If, if we ain't getting on the right track, then what, what else are we doing? Everything wrong. Okay, good. So it's a start. And if we believe, then we achieve it. All these colloquialisms, people say it for years, and we, we say it casually, but a lot of them have meaning. Most of them have meaning, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, so who, 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 Nobel? Tell me, which, which, which part did you resonate with you? Which, which part do you believe in that speech? Um, the whole speech was actually, um, it was inspiring really okay. because um as a person who wants more you know it engaged me the whole time the points that he the person brought across they were relevant um they were achievable um they it was inspiring to me the whole thing because i okay. i agree with it Okay, excellent. I'm glad you didn't fall asleep. I have to check on the others. No, so, I was listening. So, so what jumped out at, at you? I, I liked when he gave points in terms of um, surround yourself with people who know more. Um, how to, to, to read up and to watch things and to stop well to watch the news and to see what's keep focus of what's going on around you and he, he 
made note of not just locally, like visit India and visit China because they're gonna run the world at some point in time. And so the points, the points, they the points are what he listed to say how to do what needs to be done. They they stood out to me. Eat healthy and 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 pay it forward. You know, help other people and don't just make money just to make money, but make money and do something. For noble purposes. Yes, yeah. not make money. Okay, so this is what we want you to write your essay on. Whether you agree, disagree, or we want you to go and do some further research to develop those points. Okay? All right. Okay, good. So and you have your topic in there, so okay. this. So you could choose from the list, but particularly I wrote down, surround yourself with someone who knows more, read right. the newspaper internationally and locally, visit India and China and pay it forward and noble purposes. So all of that, we want you to expand on and, and that's what, what you would read to us on February 9th. Okay. Okay, excellent. Good. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Margaret? Yes, ma'am. Same question. And every everybody's gonna um, have the same question and want we want to know what stood out to you and from what stood out to you this is what you're going to write your essay on for February night. Hold well, on, I know what stood out to me, but I don't know if I can write my essay on this. Okay, page. so tell so me what stood, stood out to you, and then tell me what you write your essay on. That's fine. Um, determining who you have relationships with. Okay, that's an excellent one to write on. Yes. Oh, I just saying I I can't tell you I didn't narrow down that's what I'm writing on. Okay. But yeah, I think that was very important. Who you have relationships, how you have um relationships with how he said it about you know the terms how much money you have and you know when you die and um your, your level of success and all that kind of stuff. That's but, the, do you agree with that? Yeah, most definitely. Yes. Okay, good, good. So <laughs> I, I would really want you to write on that and expand on is this true? You know, give a debate. Is this true? And then why is it true? Also, let me write that down. Yeah. Is it it's, true who you have relationships with can determine how much money you make, your success in life, and even when you die, if you live or die? Is this true? And why I feel as true? Yeah, right. Okay, let me write this down. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, great. Roseanne? Um, I haven't picked out which exact topic I'm going to do, but the part which stood out the most to me was when he talked about how to spend your money and how to be able to stay from spending. Okay, great. So how to stay out of debt. And we definitely need a lot of help with that. Um, the last person that, that wrote on this in my other class what they did is they decided that um, they would, you know, we would come together as a group and we would see who has the lowest interest rates. And I think a few people worked in the credit union. They went down and they got the, um, the interest right. rates and, and, and they even challenged everybody just to save $25 a week. And they said, you know, at the end of the class, we would have had like $350 if we actually did that. And they said, well, we if you don't have 25, uh, you know, start with 10 and at least half of, I think I had about um, 25 persons in that class. This is about um, a year or so ago. And, you know, at least 10 persons had that $350 and they say I did, they were just going to leave that and continue. So, like I said, you can get creative with whatever you choose to do with it, but definitely we need some financial tips on it how to stay out of debt, um, you know, get out of this revolving credit card payments every month. So this this would be a very good topic. Um, you, you, you're you going to do your essay on or no? About the money, yeah. Yeah, how to stay out you of debt. You can say the topic over again, how to stay out of debt. Yeah, how to stay out of debt. Would, would give us some tips in, on saving. Because it seems like we, we there's another systemic problem. Um, we don't know how to save. So, you know, we can start small okay. and get some interest rates and see um, where the fees are low and, and go from there. 
Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Kendra? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, Are you inspired or, or how do you feel about this? Uh, I'm always uh, inspired when it comes to leadership because I think okay. it's, a, it's a tremendous void. Um, like Roseanne, um, it's looking at the aspects of avoiding debt as a collector, of course, how uh, that plays into everyday life, but I'm more drawn to why leaders fail. Okay. Fail our nation. Uh, not a, in our nation, but just why, why do leaders fail? And I think he hit a lot of keys, but I think also if I didn't see it, I think it has everything to do with greed. Um, I think the premise of greed is one of the greed, one of the major reasons why I think leaders fail. So I'm kind of leaning towards that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. So we'd be happy to hear from you and how you do some research and you develop that. So very good. And again, um, they fail, you say, along with what he mentioned, as well as greed, are there any solutions? How do we help them? What, what do we put I, in I think what, what tends to happen, what needs to happen is that there needs to be, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Guidelines in regards, guidelines, more accountability. Okay. I think I think what happens is that That's it right there. when persons reach a certain point in whatever field they're in, and not just politics, not just church, but even in families, when you do not have somebody that you are accountable to, then you are heading down a, a road of destruction because left to yourself, and I, like he says here, isolation, lack of accountability, right. left to yourself, it doesn't mean that that was your intention, but the fact is, is that because you did not answer to somebody else, it leaves a loophole for you to go down what I call the proverbial rabbit hole. It's a right. whole way where you go down and it really, most people can get out of it. Correct. And again, um, it's very difficult to discipline yourself. You normally need to attach to somebody. You know, as human beings in the flesh, we, we have to discipline ourselves. There's no discipline at all. And we can look at what happened in the Capitol in the U.S. last last week. And I watched a television program that basically said that Trump, you know, surrounded himself with a bunch of yes men who true. didn't give him any advice, didn't tell him to you know, stop him in his tracks and didn't discipline him in any way. And so they disagreed with everything he said. And hence, this is why America is where it's at today. So you need, you know, they said each great leader should have at least three persons to help them to become great, to keep them accountable, to make them responsible, to remind them that, you know, you made some promises or some commitments and you must follow them through or you know the law says this or this is correct way to you know to act ethically so very very good topic and we look forward to you developing that and uh, you know adding some more meat to that topic so thank you for that okay fabian good night good night, good night. Um, I have what stood out to me, but I'm not sure this is what I want as my topic. Okay. Um, it's similar to Roseanne's um, topic in terms of managing your funds and retirement. A lot of people work nine to five with the base salary just going towards retirement and not actually investing and having a plan for their future. And that doesn't really last during their retirement stage because they end up in debt for mortgages or whatever loans they may have occurred during the years. Okay, correct. Good. So what you could do to help us, Fabian, to make sure that we don't end up, you know, retired and broke and, and can't survive and then having to depend on our children who have their own families and their own bills. Could, could you do some research and get us some help and give us some tips on what to do to ensure that we manage ourselves and our funds properly so that we have an interest savings. You think you could develop some tips? 
I can look into it if yeah. I decide. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully, I mean, even if you choose another topic, we, we want some tips. We need some help with that. We want to ensure that, you know, when we get to retirement, um, um, you know, we can sustain ourselves. And I, I don't normally watch TV, but I did watch a movie. I think it was Con Air, where it was the craziest guy on, on the flight. Any of you watch Con Air? Con Air. Yeah, it's a very old movie. I, I don't normally Nicolas watch Cage. It. As soon it as was, I saw Nicolas Cage, I switched the channel. Nicolas Cage was in it. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. But there was the guy who- Why? You know, the guy who won all the awards for Fargo? He was the crazy person on the, the crazy. on the, the crazy looking one, yeah. Right, right. and they had him in a, with the little girl. Right, so they had him in a muzzle, and they had him in a cage, and what have you. And you know, Nicholas Cage sat next to him at one point because they had let him in the cage on the flight, and he said, "You are crazy." And so, um, the guy said, "You call me crazy? What is crazy is that most people in this world they work for twenty years." And after they work for 40 years, the dogs just let them go and they can't even pay their rent a month after. That's crazy, you know? And so that has stood out to me for, for many years from that little scene in that movie where he said, and I said, you know, you're right. A lot of people do work for 40 years. And what do you get? Uh, a small little retirement party with a gift certificate. And then the month after you can't pay your rent. So. Fabian, please do some research. Let us know, you know, how to sustain ourselves and give us some tips on, you know, Ms. sustainability. Fuller, yes? Just a question. As a banker, uh, do you feel that we've always been taught to, quote, unquote, save but never invest? Correct. Because they're two Correct. separate portfolios. Correct. Correct. I, I, I've been asking people, I'm like, wait a minute. All we've known is that we should save. And the one thing that we've figured out about savings in this particular climate with COVID is that the majority of the person's uh, savings for the most part have been depleted over the last, let's say, nine months. So what are, what are the avenues that we really have to investing? I mean, I know I'm off topic. I just thought I would ask no, you've no, been in banking no, on, on. for a while. Again, all of this is very relevant. And I'm going to tell you that the governor of the central bank said this, I think when they were announcing that they are going to you know, um, put together the credit bureau, he said one of the reasons we're putting together a credit bureau is because most of the Bahamians have less than $1,000 on their accounts and nobody has a savings. And so somebody put their hand up you know, in the class that I was in at that time, because we had listened to that tip and, you know, we were getting different points of view. As he said, most people shouldn't have more than a thousand dollars on their account because there are no interest rates. So why would you put the money on a, an account and get more charges than rates? You should have that invested um, in some stock or in securities or in the market. And, and that's where the money should be. So what the governor should have done is said, you know, there's one systemic problem where people don't have money on accounts and they also don't have any investment. So you don't need to have the money sit on the account, you know, it ain't getting no interest and you only getting fees. So again, like you said, we are trained to only save but not invest. So correct, Kendrick. And so we need to look at ways to invest. So by all means, if you do, save this $25 a week and it adds up to $1,000. And if you're not getting that interest rate, then of course, look at, um, you know, I always feel that you need five revenue streams. So look at different ways and different markets that you can invest in. Perhaps it's the guy on the corner who cleans your car. He comes and he cleans everybody's car um, at your office and he makes, you know, four or $500 a day. That's an investment you could perhaps say, let me go and hack on um, buying your cleaning um, utensils. Um, I, I invested in a boat. I have a fisherman who goes out, you know, I get a percentage off of, you know, my investment. So there are a lot of ways, this is not only stock market or shares or what have you, 
there are a lot of startups out there that need help. And we could, like I say, always be like the Chinese and be like the Africans or be like the Haitians. They, they come and, you know, the Bible says no man will be um, king in his own country, but they network, they work together, you know, and they are able to save and they have control of the market. And so we as the humans need to come together and be able to learn from them and, and do the same thing. So spot on, Kendrick, very good. And so I know you're going to talk about leadership, but Fabian, if you want to expand and you need some more um, information to put in your essay, you could never talk with Kev, as Kendrick said, and, you know, mentioned that one of the problems is savings and, you know, nobody's giving us more financial advice on investing or, you know, coming together as a group. There were five guys that graduated from college together. They used all their graduation money. They put it together and they were able to uh, qualify for a mortgage in Miami to buy a house and they put it rented as an Airbnb. So coming right out of college, those five guys have invested and they are making money. So lots of, lots of ways. So I don't know if that will help you develop it, Fabian, if you are interested. Okay. Okay, great, great. Okay, Blakely, and thank you. Thank you for reading. And Margaret, thank you so much for reading, Blakely. Um, for me, the part that stuck out the most was, um, I guess, living a healthy lifestyle. Okay. I guess because for me, my life, uh, a big part of my life is health and fitness. So, and I don't think people realize how much, I guess, being healthy and being fit affects your attitude, your confidence, you know. Yeah, yeah and that your, your entire day, your entire mm -hmm. day and, and health. I have a colleague. Your productivity. Yeah, I have a colleague, um, unfortunately, just had a heart attack because of lack of rest. Very healthy, um, but just keeps going, 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 going. And he yes. had a heart attack. And the doctor said, well, the only thing I can say is because of lack of, 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 of rest. So all these things, you know, play an important part. And, you know, you can't go from crazy to crazy. You must unwind. You must feel good. You must take some time to exercise. And you must eat healthy. So, um, yes, Blakely, give us some health tips and tell us how to make it through this very stressful life. And, and you know, they are, uh, everybody goes to the doctor and, you know, there's diabetes and hypertension and all these pills that you go on. But I, I attribute all of that to stress. And I think if we really, really clear our minds and we be stressed, and like Blakey said, you exercise a little bit and you eat healthy, you will be more productive. So Blakey, we we'll look forward to your tips. And even if you, you go and say these gyms are having a special, let us know. All righty. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you so much for that. Um, Daniel? Am I pronouncing it right? Is it Daniel or Daniel? Good night, it's Tanya. Okay. Okay. Welcome, Daniel. All right. Um, Let us know what stood out. Okay. I had two topics that kind of stood out, but the one I guess that I may write my. I'm not sure yet, but the one that really stuck, stood out was um, who you have relationships with. Okay. And, you know, how it, basic, how it basically determines a lot in your life. Um, it stood out for me because I do agree. Um, who you have relationships with when it comes to, it, it affects your day-to-day -day life. So when it comes to like your work or, let me see how I want to put it. Like I give you an example. When it comes to your work, say you have a, you may be married and you know, you, you become stagnant in your position because you don't really feel that need to, kind of push to have more because you want to stretch yourself stretch yourself thin for your family so you don't really make that effort to move ahead in your career to get give you more stress for you to have stress to work and stress at home no, no. correct so, i understand yeah yeah so like your relationships the relationships that you have with certain people it affects your day-to-day -day life so it's enough for me because it's something i can agree with okay Okay, great. And again, if you do select that topic, um, please go out and give us tips on uh, choosing the right people because I know sometimes when you have the wrong people in your life and, and um, 
you know, relationships are a very big part. And it's not only, um, you know, it's friendships, it's your partner, it's your family. If you are not in a supportive, conducive environment, you, you know, you just don't perform. Um, and you're not as productive. Uh, in fact, if I had an argument with anybody first thing in the morning, I, I just do not perform. I, I always say, if you want me to do the best at work today, please let me know all the issues at four o'clock. If you come to me at nine o'clock in the morning and you tell me all the issues that you have with me, you shut down my entire day. So, you know, I even right down to my children, they know they say, okay, this happened today, but we want mommy to have a, a good day and let her focus on her work and be productive so we can let her know this at five o'clock when she get off on her drive home. So, you know, it just, you know, depends on your support system and when things are important to you. Um, I know in my ICA class, I have to literally tell the women or even, even somebody was in this class a semester or two ago and she said, you know, Miss Bullard, I have to leave work, pick up the children, drop the children home, go back to work, sign out and then come to class. And then it's like a mad rush. It takes me one hour to calm down, to get the traffic of my head, then to start to listen to you. And then, you know, when I get home, I have to go cook dinner and I have to do all this stuff with the children. And so I said, no, um, it doesn't work that way. Especially when you are married and you have children or if you've taken a class, you have to ask your significant other to work with you so you can be successful because this class isn't for free. You could have gone on a vacation, you could have paid a bill, you could have uh, done all sorts of stuff with this money, but you've made an investment into yourself. So in order to be successful and to get a good return on this investment that you've made, you have to be sound. You have to have some extra time that you don't normally have. You have to spend some time reading the book. You have to pay attention in class. And it's difficult to pay attention if you're rushing this way, fighting the traffic, late at work. So please ask the people that you are in relationships with to bear with you whilst you go through this process. And this may be just a semester. And then some of you may be in the two-year program or what have you. But if you spend your money, you have to make people in your lives understand that you need support to help you do this. So some days you may buy takeout rather than cook dinner um, on the day that you have school. If you could ask your significant other to pick the children up from school or at least deal with the children that day and then make one day for, you know, to unwind and then another day to do homework and then you'll be successful. But if you find you're going from stress to stress to stress, that that hampers a lot of persons. So I just have to literally tell everybody, listen, let's calm down. This is how we are successful in class. We first try and clear our schedules and talk to our significant others and our family members, get as much help as possible during this period saying, I just need your support. And when I'm finished, I will repay you in another way, whereas I will support you in whatever you need to do. Or, you know, I'll do a little extra here or there. But you really need to, you know, be able to unwind, have a clear mind, be able to focus and not worry about if somebody cook or somebody have the children or, you know, whilst we're in class. And then after you come from class, you put the book away, you unwind again, and then you pick up the book later on on a study day. And then you need that, that time alone so you can get focused because the interruptions, especially like if you're doing the courses like ICA and they are very comprehensive, requires a lot of reading and time. So just, just organize yourself. It doesn't happen overnight, but keep speaking to the people around you who can give you that support and saying, you know, I appreciate you. I thank you for helping me. This helps me to focus. This helps me to get a better grade. You know, I can be more focused and I can retain this. Because like Kendrick said, I don't want to talk, talk, talk. And after this class, I can't remember a thing what Ms. Bullitt say. I can't remember a thing that we read. I don't even know what we're talking about. And I just will go Okay, so... We want to be able to be receptive to what is said. We want to retain it. And then we want to go out and apply it. We don't want to just talk, 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 and then hopefully we pass an exam and not make any changes. Okay? Because as, as we know from what we've read, our nation is in peril. And only us can change it. Only us can make it. Okay? 
So I think I would have gotten a topic from everybody. Was there anybody that I missed? No? Okay. Very good. Very good. So um, I hope all of you would have found the speech inspiring. Um, I like the feedback that I got. Um, uh, one other topic from the speech that a lot of people, you know, stood out to them where it said, good looking, happy people make more money. Do y'all believe that? And I'm surprised nobody debated that. Do, do, do we believe that, baby? No, I don't believe that. Sorry, I can't hear you. No, I don't believe that. You don't believe that, Fabian? Why not? You don't have to be good looking to be happy or make money. It all depends when you're... Uh, you bet. I can't hear you. Could you speak up a little bit? Hello? Hi. Yeah, could you speak up? Yeah, success um, depends on your drive and determination to achieve something. It doesn't have anything to do with looks. Okay. A anybody else agree? Um. Margaret, what do you think or disagree? Um, I don't agree with that statement. I think that's something of the past, um, but I don't think that's the case today. They don't mean facial beauty, you know. They mean like kept persons who well, they mean present themselves well. Attractive people. I agree with that completely. Oh, you mean people like people who together, like they well kept. They well kept. They dress nice. You don't have to be beautiful facially. And you just clean and you look you, you you know what i mean you look for example well, guess what doc i agree you know Lavelle. that could be true you know because people i, I that could be true you know well I it agree. depends it depends on your career because not every rapper or anyone in the entertainment business is good looking or well kept but like but, but let's look at it from a female perspective you have to have a certain look i'm out i'm out but okay I, I want y'all, I, I want y'all just to Google it in your spare time, Google it. And they have done, you know, the university of whomever have done reviews and reports and surveys. And they found that it is true that good looking, um, people that smell good and look the part, they don't normally have to have their education or whatever, but they actually just look the part, they do make more money. So there are millions of surveys out there. And so, when you have some time, you, you you go and read that. And so ensure that every time you present yourself, no matter how you look, you just look proper, you are fixed. You I agree. Fit, I, I agree. And you present yourself professionally to the world. I fake, agree. It, fake it till you make it. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. That's not and well, a lot of people taking it. <laughs> a lot so. of people just love the box. Okay, great, great. Very good. Okay, so we have the speech down pat. We all know that what's required of us for February 9th, and again, that will be a presentation. And you may ask us, well, why are these presentations? Because again, you have to be able to. Oh, how much know, presentations, Kevin? I thought it was this one. Sorry, I didn't hear you. How many presentations have you been? More than one? That's two. One on February 9th and one on March 30th. Oh, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's still a presentation. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so again, this is just for practice because when you become the supervisor, you have to have a, 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 at least a weekly huddle day with your staff. And sometimes you speak in management yeah. meetings and, and what have you. And so if this was an in-person class, what I did is I normally, did, and when persons read it, they wouldn't have read the book the night before. And so they don't know what Miss Bullet is talking about. So I actually invite them up to the front of the class they stand in front of the class and they practice, um, you know, reading. So, and it helps. So, you know, and a lot of people came back and said, Miss Bullet, you wouldn't believe. They called me on the spot and they asked me a question. I just did not know what to do. And so all that, you know, you use us for practice. So um, don't worry if you don't know all the words or, you know, we are here to help. We are working together. We are here to network. Um, most persons, and I say this in all my classes, if we have how many persons in here now, eight persons, and all of us are uh, qualified, what makes you know you stand out from the rest? Okay, Kendrick may get the job because Kendrick is the only um, male, and I might say, hmm, I or too many females in the bank. Let me get this here one male in here. Right, but other than that, the only person who I know is Blakely. So 
Blakely's resume looks good. I'm familiar with her from other classes. I think she is very bright and, and, and she's going to be successful and a future leader. So it's Blakely. So this is why you need to get out, get comfortable, meet persons and in the corporate world who attends these meetings. Um, you know, all the executives, they are in Rotary, they are in Toastmasters, they are in Kiwanis. And so um, most persons find it beneficial when they attend these meetings and some people even want to join. But if you expect to be, you know, um, in senior management, these are the places that they hang out and this is where you have the water cooler conversations and, and this is where you, you know, rub shoulders with all the executives. So you have to, if you're looking to be a future leader, these are the types of, you know, forums that you need to attend. Nobody at the fish fry, nobody at, at, at the dock. That's only for Count Salad and Bear. And so you have to go where the leaders are. At. And when you apply for a position, and I get these eight um, CVs or resumes on my desk. I say, oh, I know Blakely. I already know about her. So she is the person, right? Just like that. I ain't even interview her yet or what have you. But she is my pick simply just because I know and We all know that we live in an environment where it's who you know. So be qualified and know some people and, and network, okay? Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Final, put up the water. Okay, so has anybody read chapter one as yet? Uh, oh, Ms. Bullet, you sent too much papers. Ms. Bullet, you sent too much papers. We had to read all of them. Tell no, me. I read the thing, but that you said it wasn't done until February, January 19th. See, I know I was prepared. Oh, okay, okay, so, okay. So, oh, because I said that. Yeah, okay, so Margaret, you, you read chapter one. Anybody else? No, 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 I read chapter one because I know we ain't supposed to read that until for next class. I read the papers that you sent. Oh, uh, okay. okay. I we briefly, be... briefly went through chapter one. Okay, but we could be ahead. You are, this is only it's eight o'clock now, eh? 7.50, uh -huh. so... Yeah, we have until 8.30, so we could start. You all want to start chapter one or... You all had enough, and, and I already talked you all to death, and we'll wait till next week. It's up to you all. Let me know how you feel. I don't know how you feel. I go with however the majority rules in this class. We had enough information for the day, or we can continue. Kendrick? Uh, personally, for me, um, I did go over chapter, some of chapter one. Um, I... I mean, we could go on, but it's up to the ladies. It's, it's a democratic situation. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we just ask two ladies, and let's see. Margaret, Margaret, do you want to be more prepared for next week, and you want to read first before, or it doesn't or matter to me. Going on? It doesn't matter to me, so we, I just go whatever the majority. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. No it's, it's an interesting chapter. Um, we could... Okay. Honestly, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't feel I didn't feel the first aspect. I didn't feel the first part of class. To me, we could go on. <laughs> okay. Oh. You didn't I, feel it? What not that really. Mean? I mean, I mean, like it was a conversation, so it wasn't a long drawn out process for me. Oh, okay, so you weren't overwhelmed by it. No, okay. not even though I sighed pretty hard. It was it was interesting. Okay, good. Okay, okay, good. I just want to make sure we don't have a message overload and we can retain some of this. Okay, that's, so very good. Good. So, like I said earlier, and so all of us have our books? Yes, I okay. have mine. No, I don't have my book. Yeah, and then, like I said, this is a very good book because in all my other classes, all oh, my books are deplorable. So, this is my best book. So, I'm very happy um, with the content. It's very, very relevant. And so, in on the agenda, let me see. I have a quiz, but it, like I said, it just depends on the feedback I get. And I got very good feedback today, whether it'll be homework or a quiz. So we will decide that next week. Ms. Bullock? Yes? Um, do I need my book to follow on or can I just follow on without it? No, you would probably need the book to follow on. I don't have my book. Okay, you will have it by next week? Yes. Okay, so it, it, it should be okay for now. So um, you can probably just take notes and, and then catch up um, you know, when you get your book, okay? okay. Okay. okay, no problem. So 
if we look um, on to chapter one, um, if we just peruse through the book, we will see that most of um, the definitions, what we need to know, are on the side of the book. So if you look just on page five, you will see operative employees, top management, you see, you see all of that, supervisors, middle management, we see that? Yes. Yeah, so as you go through the, the book, and, and then there are comprehension checks, you can probably answer them in your spare time as well. And at the end of each chapter, each chapter has a summary. So if you don't read the entire chapter, I do, uh, uh, you know, wish that you read the summary so at least you would know exactly what's happening in the chapter and what we are talking about and then there is a crossword and i think that's a little bit more fun than answering you know um the questions and the thinking critically so like i said when you do study please um read the summary at the back as well as complete the crossword um, in your midterm, more than likely, you will have one of these cross, crosswords. So if you, you know, complete them before the midterm and on the chapters that we're going to cover in the midterm, you should be halfway there. Now, some persons felt that it was easy and it was fun. And then some people said, well, how could you put a crossword in the midterm? So I tell you all right up front. So we, we already know where we are. Where okay, we are. So the crossword at the final. Hold on that. <laughs> crossword on uh, page 20 I take it yeah so at the end of each chapter there's a crossword so we have oh. a crossword on the exam on the, on, on the midterm more than likely yeah on page 20 okay so at the back of each chapter you'll see a crossword as well so there's a um, summary and then there's a crossword Okay, okay, so what um, chapter one speaks about is the organization and their levels and common characteristics that each organization has. And so the most common organizational level, and you would need to know these, even just for your quiz, you would need to know exactly what these levels are and um, how to explain them. Okay, so there are four organizational levels. Uh, and we start with operative employees. And the book tells us what operative employees are. Employees who physically produce an organization's goods and services by working on specific tasks. And so operative employees are normally entry, what we consider entry level employees. Okay. After, after operative employees, there's then supervisors, and supervisors oversee the work of operative employees and are managers who do not manage other managers. Okay, so they are also considered first level employees. So on the quiz, you may see, you know, a question that may say, what is another name for supervisors? Okay, after supervisors, there's then middle managers, and middle managers are all employees below top management level who manage other managers and are responsible for establishing and meeting specific departmental or unit goals set by top management. Then there is top management, a group of responsible, a group of people responsible for establishing an organization's overall objective and developing the policies to achieve those objectives. Okay, so those are the four levels in an organization. Okay, and then after the level, they go on to the management process. What is management? What is the process? And then there are four management functions. Um, the management um, process it's just an organization that has common characteristics. The term management refers to the process of getting things done effectively and efficiently through and with other people. Several components of the definition warrant discussion 
and the terms process efficiently and, and the terms process efficiently and effectively. Management is the process of getting things done effectively and efficiently through and with other people. The primary, the process is the primary activity is supervisors perform. Efficiency is doing a task right, which also refers to the relationship between inputs and outputs. And effectiveness is doing the right task, goal attainment. Okay, so those are uh, what you would probably see on the quiz and they are basically the definitions that you would need to know. Um, first level managers who represent first level in the management hierarchy are also the supervisors and you said that. So the management process is made up of four parts. Management is the process of getting things done effectively and efficiently. So we said that. So the process starts off with normally when you go into an institution and you are entry level, you are normally trained after you become an operative employee, when you start, you start normally at the bottom. So I worked at Finco Robinson Road when I started with Royal Bank and I was considered an operative employee. So at the time when I worked there, there were nine tellers. So I started off as a teller and then I moved on to customer service. And then they implemented a compliance department. And so then I was trained in the compliance department. And so after being an operative employee for about three years, then they were looking for a teller supervisor. And so what they did is they said that we wanted a person of course, who was already trained and um, who would have been in at least two of the positions that fall under, um, you know, the teller supervisor. So luckily it was me and another person who had, you know, trained as a teller and as um, the teller, super, you know, in customer service. So then I was able to be promoted to um, the teller supervisor. And so that was my first, um, I guess, step into becoming a supervisor. Now, what happened was I had met some persons there who were all, already on the teller lineup who had been there longer than me. I, I had also met some persons who had had more training than I am. But at that point, they felt that, um, I was, you know, the best person for the job in terms of understanding what persons um, would deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and ensuring that, you know, everybody was engaged. And what happened was the nine persons who, you know, I started with, I had a person who I would pick up and drop to work every day. I had other persons who I would go to lunch with every day but then I became the supervisor. So what, what do you think happened when I became the supervisor to those other nine persons? Yeah. Anybody? It was in your friends? No more. It was not in your friends no more? No, not at all. In fact, the girl who I dropped work and picked up every day, before I got off, she was standing on the bus stop. And she like, she didn't say anything. She didn't say I didn't need to ride wow. home. She didn't say, um, I don't need you to drop me or pick me up. She just, I saw her standing up on the bus stop. And so one day I was in my car and I thought, I say, you, you don't want to ride home. She said, no, she was going somewhere else. Okay. So you, the you, you, and I wasn't even at the top, oh. right? I was, I was just at the next level. Just at the next level. So <laughs> are, are any of you at the supervisor level yet? No, 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 no. Okay, so I you, am. you are Blakely. And so have, yeah. have you had a similar experience or do you do you feel like you got support when you got to the next level? Um I too. Yeah, I think I I I've I got support. Okay, good. And so all the friends that you were on the level would still remain friends? 
For the most part. For the most part. Okay, yeah. So yeah. I, I just want to tell you that as you move up the ladder, you may find that um, persons do not um, support you as much when you, you, you know, especially if they were your peers before and now, and you supervise them most of the time, they don't feel that you are qualified or you, know, you shouldn't tell them what to do. So don't be surprised, um, you know, if you have some difficulties. Like they say, as you, as you move up the ladder, it becomes very, very difficult. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. In fact, one or two persons even asked to move from the branch where I was and they, they, they went to other branches, which was well, well just within a, a year or so they were fired by other managers. So he, I was just thankful that I didn't have to be put in position to, to um, let any of them go. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that was just a you know, experience, and hopefully as you become supervisors, um, you all have better experiences, okay? So common characteristics, again, we said, um, do all, which all organizations have, um, the purpose they typically express in terms of goals, and we talked about goals, and I asked you to go out uh, to, you know, find out what your vision and your goals are and your mission statement, particularly if you are a supervisor. Again, what are you, you know, training, you know, your staff, you know, whose goals, when you set your goals, what are you using as a guideline? Um, what are you asking them to, you know, focus on? Is it goals to, that they just pull out of their head or they say, you know, I want to be the fastest seller, I want to serve the most persons? Or are they using the goals and the vision and the mission statement of the company and, and following suit. Again, if we don't even know it, and as the supervisors, how do we train the persons to you know, follow the institution school? So you want to ensure that um, persons are aware of what the company's beliefs are, and that's what you are training them, OK? So it takes people to establish the purpose and make goals a reality. Um, there's a systematic structure um, in each organization, it defines the rules of members and it sets limits on the work behavior. So there are performance appraisals. Um, you know, there's a guideline. We expect 20% of your time to be um, dedicated to customer service. 20, if you're within the loans department, 20% of your time or collections to be dedicated to collections and then the remainder of your time to, to a specific rule that you set. And it's very important. I know there's a big um, systematic problem across many financial institutions that do not have a job appraisal in place or just don't carry it out. There is a job um, um, description, but nobody understands or it's very old, it's outdated, and we haven't added the current um, you know, responsibilities to that. Um, are you experiencing that in your departments or for the most part here, yeah, job descriptions are up to date and people know exactly what they should do on a daily basis. Kendra? Uh, with me, uh, just trying to, collections is enough headache by itself, believe me. Um, within the department, the different aspects is dealing with the consumer, also the mortgage. So, and then there's also field works, their investigations. When you go in the field, you have to do investigations, uh, follow ups in regards to salary deductions, and so, so forth. Uh, we, our department is really set aside in that we don't have any dealings directly with, for instance, customer service and uh, loan specific. Okay, but is there a documented um, job description that you follow? And is there a performance appraisal at the end of the year based on what your job description is and what okay. you should be doing? Yes, ma'am. This uh, I think there's a new one that they're actually introducing this year um, for attainment such as uh, non-performing loans and uh, what we would call 
um, the recovery accounts as well. But the, all of that plays a part, your goals and your performance appraisal that they look at in regards for incentives. Okay, and so these are carried out. Um, everybody is aware the, uh, in January, you would sign your performance appraisal, proving your awareness and your understanding. Halfway through the year, um, somebody's pulling you aside and saying, Kendrick, very good job on your delinquency. However, um, operationally, we need you to work on, you know, pulling up your administrative tasks. But overall, by the end of the year, we expect to finish in a good position. Are you having those types of conversations? Uh, yeah, because I, like I say, we are under, we just uh, got a new general manager uh, just under a year ago. So there's still some changes being implemented slowly but surely. And what is happening, we have uh, some major coaching going on. The manager meets with uh, every employee of the department and there is a coaching session that goes on where the goals that are, uh, that are presented for week to week, it's, it's even month to month, it's week to week. And then there's the, uh, the annual goal. And then it's a week to week goals and an open door policy that allows you to go in to see, to discuss whether what are the challenges that you're having in meeting those goals? Uh, what else can I do? Can I get a little bit more equipment for it, for instance, to help facilitate this particular goal happening as well? Okay, okay, very good. And, and that's a really real way it's supposed to be. Um, there's supposed to be no surprises. Nobody is supposed to work for an entire year. And I guess in December be told that you failed, you did not meet this goal, or you did not do something properly. And a lot of times um, the supervisors of the past, they didn't work with you. They didn't coach you along to say, you know, Kendrick, um, your, let's just say your goal was a 10 for this year, you only had five. And if you don't pull up your socks or I'll help you by doing A, B, or C to ensure that you meet this goal at the end of the year. And so that's what the book talks about, um, the coach versus the um, mentor or, or the trainer. Back in the day, they used to be persons who just was your boss and they told you what to do and they would call you names if you didn't do it properly. And definitely they were not interested in meeting any goals or helping you meet any goals. And so back in the day, you know, you were the boss or, you know, there were no open door policy and there was nobody to guide you along the way to ensure that you finished the, you know, the year successfully. Today, we now have more trainers. We have more mentors. We have people that are interested in meeting goals and ensuring that the entire team understands what they are doing. Um, I think there's still a big problem around sharing knowledge because for job security, persons feel that they must hire, you know, somebody that is unqualified to ever take their position. So they do away with succession plans completely and they don't train you anything. And so I think that's still a problem. However, we've come a long way where instead of being the boss or the person who hides all the knowledge and does not try and train you, we are now to the place where we have coaches and mentors and trainers and people who do take you under their wing and supervise you properly. Are, are we there today? Or definitely, Blakely, since you are the supervisor, is this the attitude that you have? Do you ensure that the knowledge is spread equally throughout your team? There's not a favorite that you picked out and said, okay, Ms. Bullet to be the next supervisor. That's the only person who could replace me. I share my knowledge with anybody else. Have you seen a change from when you were supervised versus you becoming a supervisor? Um, well, I wouldn't say there are favorites, but there are definitely people who are more receptive of you teaching them and giving them more responsibility. So of course, those people will get more, you know, more of my time, but I try to, do it for everyone. Okay. But, um, and I think there's a change because I'm a pretty young supervisor. So, you know, I try to change things and do it well, be more, I guess, feasible for millennials. Okay. 
Okay. And so in 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 my day, you know, again, the person who was more receptive or who stuck by me got, like you said, got the most information. But you have to remember that you have an entire team. And whenever you have an entire team, you will have high, medium, and low you know, persons performing, we don't live in perfect. So you will never have a team that is completely perfect once it's a group of persons. But every everybody gives value. And back in my day, um, when it was government payday, you know, I had nine tellers. And of course, you know, that's when you became the teller of the quarter and you got a prize and you got recognition and what have you. So every most of the tellers were vying for that position. However, we did have one or two tellers who, on a government payday, when the line was out the door, could never um, work their lunch hour, always had a complaint, always had a problem, and it was not for them. And so, of course, the rest of the team felt like the biggest people were the weakest link, and, and they wanted, you know, push them aside or don't invest in them or what have you. But I found that, and I think I told the story before, if you in my other class, that you know, whilst everybody else was pushing, pushing, pushing to get the line out and, you know, serve the most amount of people and win the prize, those two people were the only people who I could rotate, send into bamboo shop, standing on bamboo shop long line, coming back and making sure that everybody ate. So you may have people on your team that you're ready to give up on and say, I don't even need them. You know, they may be the weakest link. But everybody has value. And so as supervisors, now that we are moving away from the iron fist, you know, where we used to discipline and admonish employees and we used to say, you know, shape up or ship out, we now find solutions. Okay. So if that person can only go and stand a bamboo shack or is something that person could do, perhaps that person could do all the finance, perhaps that person could. Um, stay back the longest, find something, everybody has value and it's good, you know, and and once you find what that value is in those lower performers, then share it with the team so they're not so hard on those, you know, those employees. Do, do we all experience that, Margaret, um, persons who don't pull their weight and you feel like the brunt of the, work, you know, work has to be done by yourself? Yes, ma'am, that happens from time to time. <laughs> Okay, so as supervisors, what, what what can you do to find, you know, would that suffice that nobody else, everybody else working their lunch hour, and no, this person say they have to take their lunch hour, but they'll go to, to, to bamboo shop and stand on the line and bring lunch for everybody. Would that satisfy you? Would you feel like that person had value? If everyone working on their lunch break and one person goes and get everyone lunch? That's right. Oh, yeah, because if that person don't go, then which I'll be? Right. <laughs> there you go yeah there you go and you know on those government pay i don't know margaret if you ever experienced a government pay day but this we i talk about bad bad bad, I, bad very don't, very bad don't let that be on a friday on a oh, oh. yeah that's complete so okay you all feel my pain okay so that's what we want to do we want to you know um ensure that we understand that high, medium, and low, and stop complaining and bombarding these people and saying, oh, you used to be kissing, you don't ever put your weight, you don't ever do this or that, but we as supervisors need to find now solutions of what that person can do to assist the team, okay? And so this is why the book says that the supervisor's role is ambiguous today. You know, you may be, um, you know, trying to get the love you know, the line or the door, somebody may have a death. Um, you have to now, you know, keep the line going out the door, but sit down and perhaps counsel that person. Somebody may be going through something else at home. They might have had a robbery. They may need somebody to talk to. One day somebody was pregnant, <laughs> you know, just showed up to work and went to the doctor and found out she was pregnant. And she just came to my office and cried. I couldn't say, sweetie, 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 the line out the door. You know what I mean? I had to listen to that entire story, let her cry on my shoulder whilst I open in my office door, checking on the line and making sure. So um, there are various different rules that you have to, to play, okay? And what happens is 
management, your the supervisor is normally the liaison person between the operative employee or the entry level pro employee and then the management. And many times, um, because you would have had a closer relationship with these employees, you don't relay the very harsh messages that management sends to you, right? So you have to ensure that your tone is always correct, that you explain to management, um, you know, the confines of your department, who is in the department, whether you have enough support, whether your department is able to do this, if, you know, and sometimes management doesn't care and they just want you to get it done. So you have to ensure that, um, you know, you can appease both sides and, and, and always ensure that your team knows that uh, you support supported them, um, you are ready to offer training, you are ready to offer um, um, assistance, support many days, government pay days, almost every Friday, I left my office and I had my own tail and I was on the teller lineup to make sure that we had 10 tellers. But of course, you know, all of that has gone out the door now. Um, Trinidad has taken over Royal Bank and so the, to me, the service is flushed down the toilet is another thing to talk about. But back in my day, I would get cash and I would be out there on that teller lineup and because we were a team and if they were successful, then I was successful. You know, and so you want to ensure that um, once you go up the ladder, you know, persons feel that they don't even want to get their hands dirty anymore. Or I, I um, graduate from that. You know, if you are truly a team player and your team needs help you, you go out there and remember you moved up because you were expert demo. That's how you got to the next step or you were expert customer service. So bring some of those expertise back and, and, and get out there and help. And so the book says the role, what roles do supervisors play? They play the key person. Supervisors serve as critical communication link in the organization's chain of authority, the liaison between management and the operative staff. Um, staff. They are like a hub, uh, a wheel around which all operating activities revolve. revolve. They are the person in the middle because they are neither fish nor fowl. Supervisors must interact and reconcile the opposing forces and competing expectations from higher management and workers. If unresolved, this conflicting role can create frustration and stress for supervisors because that manager does not ne nearly never speaks to that um, those operative staff once you have that supervisor in the middle. So again all those harsh conversations and this must be met and this person didn't do this or that, you know, is channeled through you. Um, just another worker. Again, when it comes to management and operative employees and um, they sometimes, they don't even consider you anymore as having that position. If something's wrong, you get all the flack or something wrong, but something is right, they don't, they don't normally, you know, reward you. So some people, particularly in upper level managers see supervisors as just another worker rather than as management. This is reinforced when their decision-making authority is limited, when they're excluded from participating in upper level management decisions, and when they perform operating tasks alongside the same people they supervise. So again, like I said, you're being a team player, you're going out there, you are helping the line, but again, when it's time to make a, a decision, then they, they forget you in the decision making process or they you know they they send out directives and they don't even consult you you know to get your opinion so again supervisors and then you get to management again and this is why we're here to you know to train you so hopefully when you get there you will see both sides of the story and so you understand from the operative point of view and then hopefully you get some management training and so you understand from the management point of view and then you make better decisions for all, okay? Because again, um, like when I started, most people are coming to work, they, um, they hate their jobs. Some people have committed suicide. Some people have driven planes through organization and killed six people. Um, all of this is because of the stress. Um, the type of um, 
you know, ambience that's on that job or the culture within the place where people, they don't feel welcome, they don't feel like they are part of the team. Um, you know, I wasn't really interested in banking, but what, you know, what motivation had come from in and then I, you know, have an ethical standard that I learned from home where, you know, you put your best foot forward and you do, you know, what you were supposed to do, no matter what job you are on, once you are collecting a salary, everybody did, did not have that home training, everybody did not have foundation or ethical standards. And so when you meet those type of persons, you have to actually train them. Um, again, we don't live in perfect. Everybody is not going to come into your institution at the same level, you know. And so persons need to be trained. Um, normally, when persons hire you or the HR hires you, there's a personality test that you take to see what type of person you are. But those personality tests stay with HR. And you as a supervisor, you never see it. So you don't even know what type of person this is. Where if the attitude is wrong, they are, you know, they are outcast automatically. And so hence a problem just develops and develops and develops. And supervisors really don't find out what is wrong, um, why does this person act this way, what is their experience, how can I help, how do I, you know, um, find a solution a lot of people don't spend the time you know and and find out you know everybody you know three months probation we just let you go but all of that you know affects the bottom line because you would have invested so much money into bringing this person on staff training them teaching them your skills and then you just throw them back into the world so what i would suggest as supervisors is those same personality tests that the persons were taken to, you know, be hired and come into the institution, you know, take some time and read them and find out who these people really are and what you can do to, um, you know, help them, you know, help them to succeed. Because you really, what I used to hate was, you know, I took so much time because I was very goal driven. And we had a team and everybody had a part to play in the team. And halfway through the year, you know, I would have invested so much knowledge. I was on um, the right track to meeting our goals. And let's say our goals was 900 credit cards for the year. And we divided that into each person would have brought in 100. And halfway through the year, you take one of my people. So how can we meet our goal? You know, and sometimes that happens. So you want to ensure that um, everybody knows the values, everybody knows, you know, we are working toward one common goal. Um, policy and procedure is important. We want to share, you know, there, we look at this book and we say, oh, this is so much pages, nobody's going to read it. We perhaps look at the script and say, oh, eight pages, we really don't have time to read it. And that's the same way we look at, um, you know, policy and procedure. And a lot of times that's key to what is really wrong, in, you know, in an institution. Everybody is just doing things based on judgment or the way somebody trained them to do it and nobody really knows the correct way to do it. And then we get audited, audit finds out we were missing a step that was clearly written in the policy. But again, nobody likes to read and reading is not enforced. And so, if you are supervising, I want it when you have your, I don't know if you have weekly or month, monthly huddles, but a part of your huddle should be that let's just have a quick review of the open, account opening policy or the um, AML policy or, you know, any type of operational policy that is applicable to your department. And so, everybody is doing the same thing and doing it the right way. Like I say, a lot of times, you know, because I did audit for a very long time, I used to pick up the phone and call all the tellers and, 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 you know, in the family islands. And I would say, I just called today to find out what exactly do you do on your job description. And a lot of people couldn't tell me. It was just simple as that. So if you've never read your job description, and you just 
all this. Give me so much different things to do. I can't even keep up with it. That's a problem. Okay, because sometimes, you know, jobs do change. And at the bottom of most job descriptions, people do put and anything else that we ask you for. But anything else that you ask me to do, if it's more than 20% of the time, then it needs to be documented as a job. And then each of those job descriptions are priced. Okay, so we need to ensure that there's sufficient time uh, that, that that job description isn't underpriced and that or understaffed or underqualified. And, and that's what happens a lot of times. We just add these tasks to people. We don't properly train them. We don't offer any training. We don't pay for training, like supervisory skills. One of the, and I think somebody said that one of the requirements should be that you are either in the class or and you would have taken it before you supervise anybody because a lot of times it's how you treat people and how you deal with them and you need to understand that we deal with human beings and, and human beings have issues and so you have to be compassionate towards the issues that the human beings have and once you are compassionate and people feel at least that you know you care then they show up to work and they increase productivity and they they want to do their best because you at least care, okay? So management functions, planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. Planning is defining an organization's goals, establishing an overall strategy for achieving these goals, and developing a comprehensive hierarchy of plans to integrate and coordinate activities. And again, each, um, organization has their mission and vision and goals. Each department should then leverage off that vision and mission and goals and then, you know, have their own goal setting based on, you know, the, the, the direction in which the organization is going. Um, organizing, arranging and grouping jobs, allocating resources and assigning work so that activities can be accomplished as planned. Determining which tasks are to be done who is to do them and how the tasks are to be grouped? Who reports to whom and when decisions are to be made? And again, that's another problem within the organization. Too many bosses. Too many bosses with too many different agendas. Um, it, it, it never works. Again, when you're supervising persons, you have to be on the same page or on one accord. And if there's a, a disagreement, before you go to the operative staff, you need to tell the operative, you know, make an agreement first and go to the operative staff with one, you know, directive. Not Ms. Bullet like it this way, and Ms. Sanders say to do it that way. And I don't know who to listen to or whatever. All it does is it, it can causes confusion and then it causes errors. Okay. So you want to ensure that you're on the same page and um, that management agrees with any directive um, that you take. Um, leading, then you motivate employees. Again, motivation comes from within. Um, if that person is not motivated, you pull them aside, you find out what's wrong, and then you have to listen. Um, a lot of times I find in all my relationships, people hear you, but they don't listen to you. And so, that's a very big problem. Um, you need to listen and don't try and tell that person what they mean or tell them what you want them to say. Actually listen, in fact, write it down so you can show that you understand. And then you may, you know, you don't have all the answers. I don't even have all the answers. I still have to go and do research. And a lot of times I say, I don't, I don't know. And so if you really want to make progress and make a difference, you write that down, whatever the person's complaint is or whatever they said. He said, okay, I will go and do some research and I'm going to find a solution. At the end of the day, that's what we have to do, find a solution. So we are good, like Kendrick said, we are good at identifying what is wrong. We are good at having meetings after meetings after meetings, but we are never good at finding a solution. We always think that the solution is the, this person ain't a good fit walking out the door. No, exhaust all avenues as your supervisor. Offer training, um, you know, offer them cross training in another department, see how they work with other people, see what their interests are. And then if they go somewhere else in the department, maybe they were not um, 
good at, you know, front office, they may be better at back office and it may be a simple fix. But a lot of times we just don't like to be bothered. We don't want to take time. We don't want to go through the process and then be like, oh, sink or swim. Um, I had to sink or swim. Um, nobody showed me how to do this. And so, you know, it's a vicious cycle that that um, um, goes on. And that's why, you know, one of the questions in mentoring, I said, if you do somebody from your office, find out who is the knowledge um, person in your, in your institution. Um, find out who is the historian, who has been there the longest who's willing to share their knowledge and you would be surprised at how beneficial that would be to you at achieving your goals. Um, I had a incident, two incidences where, you know, when I became the supervisor, it took me five years to become a supervisor and then 10 years to get into management. And the people that came up behind me, it took them three years to come, become the supervisor and we celebrated that. And then that same person became management in six years. And so I said, wow, it, I, we have made progress, you know, progress in this institution because what took me 10 years now only took you six, so we are making progress. And we celebrated that. Another management said, oh, you bring in all these young people, like, you know, Blakely, she said she's a young millennial supervisor, and by all means, I support that 100%, but there will be the naysayers who will say, oh, she is too young and she don't have enough experience, but I was proud, you know? So you will find people who look at it differently. And that same manager, when they became uh, into management, that person actually came back and we had a management meeting and we don't normally talk about management meeting, um, salaries and management meetings, and that's this bonus at the end of the year. And that person, was so vicious and so